I'm gonna go ahead and just click OK and you can see that it's made a really nice pattern. You really want to blur out some of the corners and I had the underline checked so that's how you see. I was going through my analytics recently and I noticed that 92% of you is not subscribed and I have to cry myself to sleep every single night knowing that fact. So if you guys could help out and hit that subscribe button, I would really appreciate it. The one thing to keep in mind for this tutorial is that I'll be going from Illustrator into InDesign and I'll put a link or an icon on the top left just so you guys know which program I'm actually in. So we're actually gonna start in Illustrator first and I'm going to create a new document where I have two artboards that are eight and a half by 11. If you're making something that is letter, just make sure you have two and this is to mimic the two spreads that we actually have in our magazine. So I'm gonna leave everything else just is and create my document. As soon as we have this, I wanna just put these two artboards together. So I'm going over to the artboard tool clicking artboard two and just dragging it so that it's aligned with artboard one. Super simple. Next thing I'm going to do is go over to the rectangle tool which is shortcut key M. And I'm going to just drag a rectangle that goes all the way from one corner to the other of my entire two spread or two artboard in Illustrator. Once you have that, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the stroke. And then for the actual fill, we can pick any color that we want. It's not really important in Illustrator because we're gonna use this as a frame in InDesign. So, okay, so once we have this shape, we're going to go into object, go to path, and then we're going to split into grid. Now this prompt will come up and it'll tell you how many total inches you have for this rows as well as columns. All you have to do is just match that. So I'm gonna go ahead and divide these into just very even rows and columns. Now that we have this, I'm going to just drag some of these guys out. Let's say let's take six of these guys. I'm gonna hold Alt to get this guy out. And once I have that, what's really cool about Illustrator is that you can make corners really easily, whereas in design, it's pretty difficult to actually make corners. You have to go through a couple of steps. In Illustrator, it's very easy. You just have to select one of these guys, go into our direct selection tool, and you'll see these round or circles on the, on the side, and you just have to kind of drag. So the first one, I'm gonna do a nice circle, so I'm dragging that all the way down. For the second one, let's do something more of like an oval shape. So we're gonna take this guy and this guy, so by selecting them, we're gonna drag that in, and I'm also gonna max that out so that we have this shape. And then for the rest of the four, we're just going to do it for one of the corners. So now that we have all of our shapes in, we will need to download something that is extra from Illustrator. So it's not native, but it is absolutely free. And it's from this creator called Lady Jin. So shout out to Lady Jin for creating this, super useful. What it does is basically replaces whatever grid you have with the shape that you created. All you have to do is go over to the dots and then download this file. And I'll show you guys how to run this script in a little bit. But first what we're going to do is group all of this. So we're going to select all the shapes that we made, right click, group everything. And then we're going to make sure that it is in the front of everything else. So we're going to right click, we're gonna go into arrange and then bring to front. Now that's very important that you do, otherwise this might not work as you want it to work. Then what we're going to do is just select everything here and we're going to go into file and then script and then I'm going to click other script and I'm just gonna go find that in this right here, which is my download folder. You can see it's gonna bring up this prompt over here. What we're going to do is use this option here all in the group, which is why we grouped it. And then we're going to fit all of this to the element size and align the symbols by registration points. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click OK and you can see that it's made a really nice pattern on my page that I can now go and manipulate. Each one of these is a replacement of all the shapes that we made here. Now, before we actually go into InDesign, we should actually visualize what we want the InDesign document to look like first. So for example, if mine looks something like this, I know that I want more space on the bottom and less on the top so I can fit my title. And so we're gonna make that adjustment actually in Illustrator. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select the rightmost couple of columns, delete them, and then I'm gonna begin to just delete these shapes one by one until I have a shape that I think is really cool for that fade effect that we're trying to achieve. Hey everyone, just wanted to say that if you're still looking to get Adobe, I have an affiliate link down in the description where if you purchase through that link, it'll really help this channel out and you can get your Adobe Suites. 
If you're a student, you can get something like 85% off, which is a great deal for all of the different tools that they have to offer. So if you guys would like to help the channel out and you learn something here, then feel free to do that. And I really appreciate it. Now back to the video. Okay, now that we have something that we really like in Illustrator, we're gonna hop right into InDesign and then make this thing look amazing. So here we have the InDesign creation pop-up and I'm gonna put what my settings are on the top left. So you guys can go ahead and just copy that. And the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna go back into Illustrator and just copy the shape that we made. So select everything here, right click. We're going to do copy. And then we're going to go back here and then we're just going to paste or paste in place. It doesn't really matter too much. And then we're going to move this to the place that we actually want this to be. So if we want the fade to go this way, that's where we want to align it is to the left side of the page. So we're going to left click and then right click and then ungroup everything so that it's all individual path. And then the next thing we're going to do while this is still collected, don't click away. Just kidding. It's not that crazy. You're going to go into object path and then make compound path. This is exactly what you want in terms of a frame. And all we have to do is find our image and drag the image into this frame. Now, if you already have an image in mind, all you have to do is drag and drop. Then you're going to go ahead and fit. So this is right click fitting and we're going to do fit frame proportionally. I do want to kind of mirror this image so that the model is looking to the right instead of to the left. If you want to adjust the position of the picture inside, again, double click into the actual picture itself. And then once you see this little pan icon, you can actually move the image wherever you need it. So let's just make sure that both of the eyes are actually coming in. Now, once we have something like this, we really wanna blur out some of the corners to put something like page numbers, etc. And for text to read, we need to fade it out just a little bit. So what we're going to do is just put in some effects. And in order to access that window, we're gonna go up into window and then just make sure you turn on this effects tab. So it's gonna bring up this tiny little tab. So you're gonna go down to the bottom right here and then you're gonna hover over, add an object effect to the selected target. Click on that. What we're going to do is directional feather and we're going to do a gradient feather. So with the directional feather, I know my text is going to be on the right side of the page. So I really need this to not encroach too much and give a little bit more white space so that my black text can read nice and clear. So I'm going to go ahead and just adjust this. Now the top doesn't matter too much. So does the bottom or the left. So I'm just going to do this a tiny bit, but for the right, which is where our text is coming in, I might want this at a little bit of a higher number. So maybe like a three, seven, five instead of the quarter of an inch. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And we're also going to apply a gradient feather. So we're going to do that by going into the gradient feather tool and make sure you have the image selected first. So go into the gradient feather tool and then we're going to just drag this until we have something that we like. So this next part, I'm sure you guys already know a lot about. I'm just gonna be adding all the text actually into the picture itself. And I'm gonna do that through the type tool mainly. And I'm gonna make sure that everything that I do in terms of fonts and sizes are on the screen so that you guys have an idea of what I'm doing. Okay, and just making sure that everybody knows exactly what I've done here other than the type tool. With the color themselves, I made sure to use the eyedropper tool. So I highlighted the text itself, went over to the eyedropper tool and just make sure that I sampled something from the image so that it looks like it's a cohesive design. And then for this particular one, I had the underline checked. So that's how you see this underline underneath the letter. That's it. That's all you really need to do in order to create this amazing design. Let me know if you guys learn anything new and I really would love to see what you guys have created. So shoot me a message on Instagram right here or shoot me an email right here uh, or even just put it in the comments. I would love to see what you guys create and I've been getting some of that before and it just makes my day every single time. So if you guys learned anything new, please don't hesitate to like, subscribe, share with your friends. And with that said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.